Hi guys and welcome to another tutorial. I'm Rana Damien and in this tutorial I will show you how to fix an underexposed image. So I'm going to open up an image that I took years back at a photo shoot. I really liked the image but it was very underexposed. Due to the location we were at, there wasn't much light coming into the area we were in. It was an old railway station in Sydney and there weren't many windows around. But this is not a major problem as it can be easily fixed. So what we're going to do is we're going to increase the exposure just a little bit, maybe a bit more up until we are happy with the way it looks. Let's try not to overdo it though because as you can see when we do increase it up a lot we see there's a lot of noise that's appearing especially in the underexposed areas so we bring that down a bit play around with the contrast a bit and the highlights the whites okay now open image and that opens it up in Photoshop the first thing I like to do is crop my image just move that down and probably straighten it a little bit because I feel like it's looking a bit too crooked. Yep, that's looking nice. Now the, the second thing I'd like to do is duplicate my image by pressing Ctrl J. So now what I want to do is create a Levels Adjustment Layer and I go to my Adjustment Layers, go to Levels and I want to enhance the contrast in my image. So I'm just going to work on the shadows and highlights of the image and just enhance it a bit. Nothing too extreme, just to the point where I'm happy with it. looking good let's look at it before as you can see it brightened it up a bit so you can see the highlighted areas are more enhanced now as it was looking a bit too flat before so now I want to enhance the overall tone of the image I go back to the adjustment layer panel and I click on color balance and that's where I'm going to enhance the colors in the midtones shadows and the highlights of the image so we'll start with the midtones and I'm not going to go too extreme with that as I just want to warm up the image a bit. And if you feel like it's looking a bit too extreme and you're not liking the color, you can always adjust the opacity. And let's look at it before. Okay, so just reduce the opacity as I don't like how that area is looking too warm. Uh, maybe let's do 40% and see how that looks. Yeah, that's looking nice. And now what I would like to do is fix the noise that was created by bumping up the exposure of the image. So we're going to fix that. That's also easily fixable in Photoshop. And what I need to do is create a stamped layer and I do that by pressing Control, Shift, Alt, E. And that just combines all the previous layers that we edited. And then I go to Filter, I go to Noise, and I click on Reduce Noise. Okay, we need to just bring everything back to zero and I'm going to work my way up with each panel just to see how the image is going to look. And you should always do that with every image that you work on. So just slightly bring that up as well, the preserved details. And reduce color noise. And just sharpen a bit. And I'm going to select the Remove JPEG Artifact, as that would also help in reducing the noise. Okay, so let's look at the before. We added the 
reduce noise. It's not that visible when it's really close, but take a look here at the main image and let's have a look. I don't know if that's very clear on the screen, but I can see it and it's looking good. And you see the area here. Okay, I won't worry too much about it because what I'm going to do later is blur the background and that will reduce the noise. Okay, so I'm going to rename that reduce noise and I'm going to duplicate that, control J. And here I'm going to call that S and H, which is shadow and highlights. I'm going to go to image, adjustments, shadows, highlights. I like doing this with some of my images because I feel like it just pops up the colors and it gives it that nice HDR look. I don't always use it, but on some images, I think it helps. Okay. Yep, that's looking nice. Now what I'm going to do is increase the contrast on the shadowy areas as they did get brightened up when I added the shadows and highlights adjustment. So we're going to go to levels again and I'm just going to increase the shadows. Okay, and now Make sure you click on your layer mask and choose a nice big round brush. And with the bracket keys, the right and the left, you can increase or decrease the size of your brush. So what I'm going to do is invert my mask so that the effects I just created will be masked off. And what we're going to do is we're gonna brush it back on the areas that we want it to show and we want it to appear. So with a white brush, you can switch that by pressing the X key. And what that does is just switch between your brushes, between the white and black. So with a nice white brush, probably reduce the opacity to about maybe, let's do 50%. And the flow at 50%. And we're going to brush over the areas that we want to bring the shadows back. Okay, let's have a look at before adding the levels adjustment layer and after and I'm really liking this. Let's look at the image before all of the enhancements. See it's already looking really nice and it's popping out. Alright, so now I'm going to create a stamped image again by pressing Shift Control Alt E, which is a combined image of all the previous work that we've done. And I'm going to go to filter and go to blur, Gaussian blur. And I want to blur my background for this particular part. So I'll create a layer mask and I'm going to remove the blurring off my subject. And I'm going to use a black brush and I'm going to increase it at 100% opacity because I don't want any of the blur effect on my subject. If you make a mistake and you want to go back and reverse the effect by making it blurred out again, you can always just change your brush, go back to white, and what that does, it blurs it out just like this. Okay, so that's looking nice. Let's have a look at before the blurred effect. And that's looking really good. Sometimes what I like to do is make my background blurrier and what you can do is go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and gently increase it. Okay, that's too much. Let's go up to maybe 13. And let's look at the before and after. Yeah, I think that's looking nice. It just makes the subject sound out more. 
But if you like to see more detail in your background, then you really don't need to do this step. Let's just decrease that to 10. I think that looks good. Yep, perfect. Press OK. And let's look at it before and after. Before and after. And I really like the way it looks because the subject does stand out. Okay, so let's rename that blurred background. What I want to do now is just create a bit of a halo around my image. And just with a new layer, go to adjustment layers and select gradient. Now what we want to do is choose radial reverse as we only want the effect to take place on the edges of the image. Change the effect, go to neutral density Press OK and now increase it and press and click inside the image to move it around and see where you want to leave it at. That's looking good. Press OK. This is the before and after. You can always change the blending mode on that. And I think I'm going to leave it at soft light. This is what I always like to leave it at because it's just very nice and gentle effect. And increase the opacity, maybe 80%. And let's see before and after, I'm really liking that. So I'll leave it at 80%, soft light. And here we go. A very simple and easy way to fix an underexposed image. Let's look at the image before all the enhancements. And this is what it looked like. I'm just going to put them right next to each other so that you can see the difference. There we go. So the image that's on the left is what we started with. A very underexposed image and you could hardly see the details of um, everything that was around the subject and on the subject. But with very easy and simple steps, we're able to restore the image and make it look great. So the next time you take an underexposed image, I really recommend that you try these steps before you even think about deleting the image, as it is quite easy to fix. Hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial and found it helpful. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. I'll see you next time. Bye.